Hi, this is Sue Omi from Omi Graphics and Teddy Benson, and we're be being filmed by Chachi. Um, today we're going to do a very, very complicated a la poupée plate, and we thought it would be a great way to learn this technique. So this is the final print that I'm going for. Uh, this is by our own hometown gold medal Olympian athlete, Deb Armstrong, and it's her personal vision of marrying her three favorite mountains together, Mount Rainier, the Matterhorn, and Mount Fuji in Japan. She's always had this vision of wanting to have them together. So she did this on a photopolymer plate, which is right here. And I'm going to be inking this with six different colors, um, starting with the sky, which is a kind of a light cobalt blue with transparency in it. This is the Matterhorn, which is a Prussian blue with black. Um, followed by Fuji, which has this beautiful wave, this kind of illustrated wave here, um, with raw sepia and orient blue mix. And then the last thing I'll do with Q-tips is I'll apply the ink in here for these stony ridges on Mount Rainier, along with these, this kind of icy blue representing the ice. So here we go. On the palette, they all look fairly similar but they're actually quite different, as you can see, as you saw from the print. Um, and this is the recipe cards here. Um, they all have a little bit of oil in them to make them easier to ink and not so hard to wipe with my hand. So the first one I need to do is uh, number two, which is the sky, and that is right here. So I'm gonna grab some ink and go over to my plate. Now this, because it's an a la poupée, I have to ink it in all different orientations and, and directions to make it easy on myself. Usually I can just ink the whole plate sort of in one direction or sort of squiggle it, but I have to be very, very careful of all of the inking. I have to go right to the edge of the sky area, which is very hard to see. Just like that. So, and then if I go into this Matterhorn area, this really strong dark mountain, it doesn't really matter because this ink is lighter and more transparent. So it will be kind of canceled out by the darker ink once I get to that. But over here, I have to be careful again. And you can see on my ink card, I'm trying to have just the right amount of ink right on the edge, on the lip. That was a little bit too much. So I'm gonna kind of try to take some away. I'm always trying to keep the ink from going under the plate too, just because that makes more of a mess on the press. So I did this, I put a little number on the corner of each of these little mini tarlatans just because I don't want any contamination of one of these colors with another one because they all look quite similar. So now I'm going to kind of pull the ink away from the areas I don't want it to get into. And that means I have to take a swipe at it and then turn this around and do it again and find a clean area. So I'm going away from this mountain. And then here I can kind of just swirl it a little bit and I'm just catching that lip of the ink with my tarlatan. I'm only using my finger right now. This kind of goes against a lot of things that is, are taught in schools of using great big tarlatans, but you don't have to do that. You can use a smaller one if you need to. So then I'm gonna start evening this out and just making the ink that's left on the surface basically wiped down to the actual ink drawing that she did, the original ink drawing. And then the final step is gonna be hand wiping it. And right here, you can see I, met, I messed up. I got a little bit of the blue in there, but that's why I'm doing the sky first because then I can take a paper towel and just clean it off like this. I'll probably do that again before I'm done. This is the most difficult area on this whole print to keep clean. It has to be very, very clean with no blue in it. 
Okay, so the final step, I have to take my glove on and off over and over <laughs> throughout this, but I wanna hand wipe this because um, hand wiping, the process of hand wiping will leave as much ink as possible in the uh, tiny, tiny dots that are holding the, the tone, but it will also keep a nice smooth surface. Sometimes we use tissue like this, where I would just wipe this over the surface of the plate like that, but the tissue can leave little streaks, and so I've decided hand wiping is better for this. So that means I go like this, and then I get my hand, this part of your hand catches the ink, and it's kind of the perfect tool to take the ink off the surface, but keep it down below. So you, and then I have to kind of continually wipe my hand off on this paper towel like that. And it will get to a point where it's very smooth and I'm not really taking any more off like this. And then you start to see the variations in the actual drawing in the plate. Um, and so it's really, really showing what the artist did. And again, this plate is uh, backed with steel, and this is a giant magnet sheet, so it sticks to this surface, which I love. And you, in this situation, you need to turn your plate around in whatever orientation makes the most sense to get the wiping right. So now I'm gonna start this dark mountain in the middle. Glove back on. That's this color. And this color has Prussian, raw sepia, and Charbonnel black. So it's very, very dense. And this one's really tricky because of this edge. So I don't want to get too much. That's fine. I went over there, but I can clean that later. That's why I'm starting with the darker one because that way I can clean up my mistakes. And these little fingers kind of creep into this area, so I have to kind of get these little guys like that. Then I can just fill it in the middle easily, like that. And I'm gonna scoop a little extra off so I don't have to wipe away so much. So the same thing here, I have to kind of pull the ink into the area and away from the sky. That's the critical thing. So, oops, <laughs> I just got some right in the sky. I'm doing this just to get rid of most of the ink so it's not as messy. Okay, now I'm gonna go back and pull this away. Just be a little bit easier. So again, I'm gonna pull this into the mountain. So I'm just kind of picking up a little tiny bit of that dark blue, and then every single time I'm wiping it off my hand. So I did get a little blob here in the sky area. So just to be safe, I'm going to tap a little of that color back in with my finger. And this is gonna happen throughout the whole plate. I'll have to do stuff like this. Grab this tarlatan again. Kind of lightly rub this in. that and presto it's gone and then the last thing I do on this area is a little q-tip and this goes kind of up it softens this edge of the tone and it goes up into here so that there's no um, transition of ink that you can see I'm also going to clean that up clean this up 
Q-tips are really a great tool to have at your disposal. And then the last little hand wipe just to soften all of that. Like that. And there you go. Okay, so now we're gonna cut to fast motion. <laughs> See you at the end. Okay, so now I am doing the final two colors of a la poupée on this plate. I have to apply them with a Q-tip because it's such tiny little skinny areas that this is the only way it'll work. So the first color I'm doing is this raw sepia color, which is in the rocks. And I got a little bit too much there. Um, so I have to look over. So the trickiest part is remembering exactly where this goes. Um, and I'm basically just kind of applying it and rubbing it in slightly to get started. This area, this whole area has it. So this is actually, this application is more similar to the original method that a, a master printer would use to apply the ink, which is also where the name Ala Poupée comes from and they would take uh, something like this, a little rag or something, and they would make a little kind of pad and then tie it up with a little string and it looked like a little doll, which is what poupée means in French. That's where the term comes from. I just have to be careful that I don't let the Q-tip get too um, dissolved and start like shedding fibers into the ink. So once I get all of these applied, then I will hand wipe all of these. And then in between, all of these other marks are going to be my last color, which is sort of a turquoise icy blue. So these are easier because there's not really any problem of getting color next to it, except for right here and up there in the sky. And I can always clean out a little bit before I start applying the last color, the turquoise. So you don't have to be quite as careful. So this artist created many variations on this theme, and it wasn't until I started inking this particular one that I realized what she was trying to accomplish in here. And um, the, what, the color I'm doing right now are these rocky cliffs that are found throughout Mont Rainier. And then all of the turquoise color is this beautiful ice, icy blue of the glacier. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a quick little hand wipe. I'm actually gonna use this. So you can see this, this is a really good way to see how the hand just pulls that ink right off and cleans it up. Okay, and then the trickiest part is up here by the sky. So I'm really, really cleaning my hand, which is now getting polished and raw. I don't want to get any brown up in that sky. So you kind of grab it and pull towards yourself. Hand wiping is a very tricky skill. It takes a lot of years to learn how to do it. So I'm, now I'm going to apply the last color, number six, which is this nice turquoise. And this kind of just goes everywhere in all of the empty spaces in this area. A lot of it gets wiped away, but there's spots where there's a beautiful, soft, shading tone. So some of this is a little tight. I'm also adding a little bit of this color just just because of I don't want any um, little edges to show where I stopped inking. So now I'm just kind of filling all that in. 
even though I probably won't like there, I'll wipe a lot of it away. Okay. So now, of course, I don't want to get this turquoise into the brown if I can help it, but the brown color is stronger, so it will kind of override it if I do. Okay, so we're almost ready for the last hand wiping. Just taking as much off as I can. So where you start hand wiping is really just dependent on the image. In this case, I'm trying to pull this down and obviously pull it away from that area. So I'm gonna start up here and get rid of all the easy stuff first. And you can see how nicely it just cleans right up. And all those little brush marks that she painted hold the ink. So here, I wanna make sure I don't have any blue. Pulling it away from the brown. Sometimes you can also use your thumb, the pad of your thumb. In this case, it kind of fits nicely right in this little section. It's a little trickier. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna do is just take um, paper towel and Q-tips and clean out some of the white areas, and then I'll see you at the press. So we're ready to print um, on my big press and we are, the paper's all soaked, I just calendar it. I'm holding it down with this tear bar. I'm gonna fold it back like this and then get my plate very carefully and lay it down here in the press bed, right in the right spot. Then I'm gonna gently lay this damp paper back over it very slowly. Take away this, which is holding it. And then we're ready to go. I'm just gonna hold the blankets a little bit as it goes through. It's gonna get very tight. Very slowly, so that all the ink will come out. When you feel it go off the plate, then you can go faster. Oops. And then we're ready for the reveal. And here we have it. Nice. There it is.